Let us say the House of Assembly today imp impeach Mr. Philip Shaibu as the Deputy Governor as Mr. Omobaya Godwins has been inaugurated to replace him. And some PDP lawmakers in the House of Representatives are asking for the removal of Mr. Damagum as the party acting chairman. They've threatened also to leave the party. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the program. This is Politics Today, live on Channel Television. I'm Sean Joaquin Baloy here in Abuja. Tonight, we'll be dissecting some, perhaps, your biggest political stories in the land. On one hand, the Edo State House of Assembly they have impeached Comrade Philip Shaibu. And on the other hand, in the People's Democratic Party, when federal lawmakers gather to say, look, we want our acting chairman to leave office because he's colluding with the opposition or the ruling party. And if he doesn't, they are threatened to leave the party. They say there are about 60 of them. We cannot confirm that, <laughs> that number. Do they have signatures? How, with, how do they come about uh, those uh, uh, claims that they have against Mr. Damagum? What has Mr. Damagum done to uh, these members of the House of Representatives? And this is coming when the next meeting of the party is uh, about to happen. We'll be hearing all of that. The brand new deputy governor of Edo State will also be speaking with us on the program. The man who is impeached, uh, the man who is replaced uh, comrade Philip Shohabo. Tonight we'll be hearing all of that. Let's begin tonight, everyone. The Edo State House of Assembly today impeached uh, comrade Philip Shohabo as a deputy governor, ending a long drawn drama between him and the governor, Godwin Obaseki. And he today said, whatever has happened is, between, is because of his ambition of wanting to become governor of Edo State. And of course, uh, today, uh, it was during the plenary session in Benin City when the Edo State lawmakers moved that uh, they should remove the deputy governor following the sad relationship between Governor Basaki and Mr. Shaib. Shaib's impeachment followed the adoption of the report of a seven-man committee set up by the chief judge of Edo State, Justice Daniel Okumbawa, to investigate allegations of misconduct against the deputy governor. Let me allow you to listen to some parts of when the, the lawmakers adopted the impeachment of comrade Philip Shaibu. have an understanding of where it happened and that was how the time of Comrade Philip Shaib ended as a deputy governor of Edo State. Well, he's a comrade and he has chosen to fight these. He said, this is I... illegal and he will fight it. Let me allow you to listen to Comrade Philip Shaib who has been reacting to. He said, this is a descent into dictatorship and this is a threat to democracy is that look this is about him wanting to become the governor of Edo State and wanted to pursue his constitutionally guaranteed right as a citizen to becoming the number one citizen of Edo State. But now that has been truncated. Take a listen to Comrade Philip Shaib. I denounce in strongest term 
the illegal impeachment by the Edo State House of Assembly over Trump up charges. This is not just an attack on me as an individual, but on the very democratic principle that we hold there. It is a dangerous descent into dictatorship and a threat to the foundation of our democracy. Let it be clear that this impeachment was harsh because of my ambition to contest the Edo State 2024 governorship election under the People's Democratic Party, PDP, an ambition that is a legal right to all citizens of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We will fight this injustice with every order of strength in our being for the sake of the people of Edo State and the future of democracy. There you have it. That's a snippet from the video which emerged, recorded by the outcome or the impeached deputy governor of Edo State Comrade, Philip Shoabu. Well, just as that was happening in the House of Assembly, uh, an event, uh, a ceremony to, for the inauguration of the new deputy governor was going on at the government house just on the other side uh, of the streets there, uh, where... Mr. Omobayo Godwins was being prepped to becoming the deputy to Governor Godwin Obaseki. And so the 38-year-old engineer was eventually sworn in as a deputy governor. Let me allow you to listen to some of uh, the natural sound from that event. To the Federal Republic of Nigeria and that I will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Do solemnly swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria, that as the Deputy Governor of Edo State, I will discharge my duties to the best of my ability, faithfully and in accordance with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and the law. All right, then. There you have it. You heard the swearing in, and the die is cast. Philip Shaibu gone. Amobayo Godwins is now the deputy governor of Edo State. He will be deputizing uh, alongside, uh, with uh, Governor Godwin Obaseki. The deputy governor of Edo State, Mr. Go uh, Godwins, joins us live, uh, virtually, from Benin City. Thank you so much, and congratulations to you, Mr. Deputy Governor. Thank you, sir. I don't know if uh, my sure. records are right. Uh, if you, sure. you, you will probably be the youngest deputy sure. governor in the history of Edo State. Am I right? Probably. Yeah. How does it probably come to you? Right. How does it feel to now become a deputy governor? Now become a 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 I don't know if you, if you can... Can you can you can you hear me? All right. So I was asking, how does it feel to become a deputy governor? It, it appears you are muted, deputy governor. Uh, if, if you can tell uh, some of our guys that if they can uh, help to unmute the device. All right. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. So my question is, how does it feel to become a deputy governor? Uh, it's a plus for democracy, sir, and it has actually induced 
the confidence of the youth. If you see Benin today, you see Edo North, you see Edo Central, the whole place is agog with celebrations. Youth are very happy that a, a, a 37 year old, 37 plus, on the 38th of July 19, and it is a big news for them, and it's going to raise their confidence to participate actively in politics. Yeah, they probably will think that also that Philip Shabby is one of them. Is uh, is also some people would regard him as all. I mean, as a youth also. So is he a removal of one youth for another youth? <laughs> when when you look at the age margin, that we I I, I don't like to talk about. Uh, I don't want to talk about Philip Shabu. I, I I prefer to talk about myself and what this uh, what this means to me and the people of Akoko Edo in particular and the people of Edo State in general. So yeah, what does it mean to you, becoming a deputy governor? Is it a lifelong dream for you? Uh, if you look at my address to my acceptance speech, I tagged it an act of God. Uh, of course, I, I ran for House of Rep in 2023, where I clearly won, and the political buccaneers uh, took it away. So that is why I said there's a hand of God in it. I wasn't even expecting this. I was expecting to contest in 2027 only for me to be a brand new deputy governor. So I give that to Almighty God. So it's an act of God. And I'm happy about it and promise to maximize it to the fullest potential so that I will be a model for other youth in those states and uh, in particular Nigeria in general. Yeah, a few months ago, you were donning the, uh, the, the hats, the clothing, the colors of the Labour Party. Today, you are a deputy governor in the PDP government. Does that sound right, though? Well, but I have a model. I have a style of politicking. It is called the Omobayos model. And if you retrace it back to 2023, I had one of the best campaigns in Nigeria where I took uh, APC and PDP by storm. It was a traditional way of, uh, of a campaign. It was uh, devoid of uh, political affiliation. The people, there was nothing like labor in Akoko Edo, for instance, but I took the campaign to their homes. I visited almost every home in the 43 communities in Akoko Edo because I went to them to say, please vote for me. It's different from somebody thinking that there's a structure, whether you're in PDP or APC. So my style was totally different. The people that voted for me, they're not Labour Party uh, carrying members because the local government is traditionally APC and PDP. And I got a very good result, which eventually went to the tribunal, but couldn't get any results. So I have adopted that one. I just like good governance, and I like, I'm, I'm a young politician. I should look at the opportunities here. And the labor of last year, when you had Peter Obi, is not labor today. So, uh, and when you look at the candidates, when you look at them side by side, the PDP, APC, and the labor, when you look at uh, Paris Tasso and Godalu, you know, you look at uh, the political technicality of uh, Paris Trasarodio, okay, who has been on ground for over two decades, and you want to pitch your tent as a young man who wants to excel politically, I think it's a, it's a good option. Uh, not, I, I don't regret it at all. Uh, you also don't regret, perhaps, that you're going to be a deputy governor for just a few months, isn't it? To Akoko Edo, I come from Akoko Edo Federal Constituency. I consulted very widely, and the uh, uh, popular opinion suggested that I take that appointment. Even if it's for 30 seconds, the people of Akoko are very grateful, sir. So, so to me, it's like six years. And it is not the number of months or the number of years. It is the number of impact. I just want to finish strong or strongly with the uh, governor because I have followed his uh, plan as an engineer. I had cost to look at one or two. I was involved in this, uh, what you call the Bini Master Plan. We are, we just, we are doing a donut and a do central now. And uh, I think... Is, is, is good, is, is one of the best administratively. And I, and I like his style of administration. So I will do my best within the habit of what I have. I cannot give what I don't have. But what I have is, by, by, by the reason of being a youth now, looking at that age, is a plus for me because the youth are everywhere. They are happy. If you look at, you, you can see the crowd there. It's massive. I, I couldn't, it took me time. It took the intervention of police and DSS for me to able to get into my car. So there's so much excitement and uh, I'm happy about it. But what I'm interested in is to look at my job role, my job specification and see, because it's a job for me, and those must not go 20 years backward. 
I have looked at the man's plan, the person of God, you know, Pasaki, and, the, and as I look at is the prospective candidates that are uh, that have the ticket currently under the PDP, I think that if I do it with them, I'm also going to accept politically, which will translate to uh, it will give a, a political outlook. I'm concerned so much about Akoko Edo, but interestingly, God just gave me uh, a mandate to serve a those state. I've not talked about this, but I just termed it an act of God. Are you a member of the PDP now? Yes, I am. When did you join the PDP? Immediately, a few months after I, I finished from the tribunal, yeah, about five, six months ago. What, what led you to exiting the Labour Party? No, to be very frank with you, the Labour Party is not just a party, it's a movement I hold daily. Uh, if, if I have the opportunity over and over, I will continue to thank them. It was the Labour Party that gave me the platform. So, so like I told you, what informed it is Akoko Edo was my, or is still my major project, and we are predominantly APC PDP. So I got that weight from Peter Obi's uh, uh, majors as a candidate, and I was able to, because we had several court cases at the time between Honorable Peter Akpatasi and the other man from APC, and the right Honorable Ajoto and the other man from the legacy group. So, so for eight, nine months, they were not campaigning, they were in court. So I had a free time, and I moved around the entire local government. I had all the days, so they bought into my campaign. So my future project projection suggested that if I try that again now, it may not go well because uh, Koko Edo needs a serious intervention. And I'm happy with this six months, or what you call seven months. It's okay for me. And the governor has told me in clear terms. And we discuss about some critical... Because when I meet people, I don't tell them about what I want. It's what my people want. And uh, from the look of things, I gave him a need assessment of my people. And I am sure that we may not be able to do so much, but I will make an impact that Akoko Edo will remember me for, and Edo North, and Edo State in general. So, so in your own estimation, um, Aswe Godalo is better than Olumide Akpata. Is that what you said earlier? What you were inferring? Like I said, I don't like talking about people, you understand? I just told you that in my own personal opinion, I stand to be corrected, it's my own opinion. I just look at, when you look at, but he has a style that I, I think he campaigns like me. When you see us in the street of Benin here, if you, if, there's, if you see five people eating somewhere or drinking, as we will come down and start telling them why they must vote for him. He doesn't look at it that, oh, the population, he doesn't need to cover a wide area, a wide number of persons. Even if it's two persons, you will see us there. And then it's, from my own opinion, I think he's very humble and humility is key. He has the kind of style of the way I play my politics. We were discussing uh, this morning, and I don't want to mention him, so somebody, an aggrieved person, didn't want him to come close to the house. He, he first deserved it and went upstairs. He heard the, the old man, and before you knew it, the old man even took him and put him on his laps because he was able, to, and that is what politics is all about, how you are able to. Uh, uh, get results. It's not making efforts. It's, 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 you can see that it's trying to get results. And there, you, there lie a deputy governor candidate, the person as the Paris House of Joe Gay. You should follow his political trajectory. He has the 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 the, the, the 64 words in the do not in his palm. The the over 200 or something words in those state. He can give you. He, his structures are everywhere, very present. And the way he plays his politics. There is no time he reaches out to both PDP, APC, and Labour. He has done that consistently. So there is no way, especially at those hearts, he's not going to get very, very reasonable vote but from my calculation. But beyond this, it's, it's an opportunity for me to actually serve. And I'm happy. It's the best day of my life, sir. Did you contact the governor that you wanted a job, or it was the governor who got you or contacted you? Or how did you get a job in the first place? The party contacted me, but I, I have been following Aswe Godalu privately. Uh, there's hardly no day I don't listen to or watch his video, maybe 10, 20, 30 minutes. I fell in love with Aswe Godalu. Then, of course, as an engineer, we have been doing one or two. Uh, uh, in terms of consultants, I told you I am critical to the master plan. So I have been following of Nobasaki because for me, I have a knack for professionalism. It doesn't matter to me whether you are PDP or APC. Once there's development, if I see the outlook that there's an outlook that suggests that we'll get development in the affirmative, I came to it straight up. 
and the, something struck me. I went for a chamber meeting one day, and the, what I saw was massive. There's this ego app that I created. You don't, you don't find manual files in the do secretaries, no. Everything is fully automated, and at a glance, it can reply your memo, how it does it. It's an IT enthusiast. I think uh, it, may not, it may not have done so much according to other people, but for me, I think it's far above average, and I like his style of administration. So I have been, even though I'm in labor, I was in labor, I've been looking at maybe pitching tests with the party. So as soon as they came to me and uh, we looked at the figures together, because remember, the game is a game of figures, and we saw that a donut, we may be a deciding factor. I will wear some relative popularity, popularity there. I was okay. Uh, Akoko Edo is even a critical case. Since 1963, when that local government was formed, we've never had it. The world, the best was the chief of staff, and it was still from Godwin Obaseki. Are you, with, are you there? I'm, I'm listening and, uh, to you. Yeah. 1991, when Edo State was formed, till today, except for statutory positions like commissioners that we come normally, or as of assembly, or as of rep. Uh, they seem to, we seem to be marginalized. Whereas we have nine federal constituency. When this accord was one constituency, Akoko Edo was a federal constituency. When they became Tiri, Akoko Edo is still one constituency. So the people of Akoko Edo are not interested. It's a victory for them. It's like uh, 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 Basiki has broken the lifetime gener generational cause. So they, they have a hid heart to them as we speak. It doesn't even matter to them if they feel any sense of development, physical infrastructure for the next six months. What they are interested in is they, they now have a fair share, even though not so much, but they are grateful. So it was because of Aswe Godalo that you got the job. Come again. I mean, your, your getting the job of the deputy governor was predominantly because of Aswe Godalo. The party came to me, yes. And the other parties also came to me. Uh, looking at what came out, because Akoko Edut churned out over 42,000 votes. Beavers votes, not all this number of total registered voters. No, Beavers voters. You know, so so so, and they, I I I got a very good result. I even won that election, even though they said I didn't win. But of course, the 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 feedback, you know, is input is is input that gives you output. So the feedback suggested that I won that election or I made a very good impact. And uh, both APC and PDP came to me. But of course, as a man, I must make a choice. And I looked at it vis a vis what. The outlook may look for I'm looking at the future. You understand? You talked about six months or six years. If this is only if this is the last I'm going to use, I'm going to get for my people, I have healed them mentally. That is enough for me. But I know that I spoke with the governor and he gave me his words that we'll be doing one or two interventions for my people. And uh, I think I'm happy for it. What would you be bringing to the table? When you mean to the table for the remaining six months, or what is that what you mean? Yes, for the six. I mean, you are you are going to be there <laughs> only for the time that uh, the constitution permits. Yes, I say I have an engineering background and I'm a practicing engineer, and I've been working with the state government, consulting for them in the area of their master plan. So I'm already bringing something, and it's critical. I have some critical areas I'm handling, and I'm interested in a donut because we have. Uh, you know we have about our natural resources, and you have illegal miners everywhere trying to. Uh, this will cause uh, uh, head hazards and all of that. So, in particular, we, I'm, 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 I'm in that team that is trying to put few communities like Ikweshi, Opela, where you have a, a large deposit of limestone, dolomite, and all of that that causes head hazards. And uh, we are trying to check the master plan in such a way that the people will be safe. So, for me, it is just. Uh, it's a plus for me. That is number one. But number two, uh, like I told you, it is politics more, more than 70 percent. And I, it suggests that the, for, from the look of things, it, it, it was a very good decision from the party. And you can find out, do your private investigation. The city of Benin today, in those states in general, is you can see the use everywhere. They are eating, drinking, and marrying. They are very happy. So to them, it's a win for democracy, yeah. And we hope to sustain that. So um, I'm asking, uh, well, if you're talking about uh, being a deputy governor, uh, and I'm assuming that you're already going to be apprised in the coming days, understand more what being a deputy governor is, 
that those who are describing it as an extra tire. You can only do as much as your principal can permit you to do. You can only go as much as your principal allows you to go. It's more or less a legend. And you can only assist or act when, uh, well, the law even in fact states that you can only deputize when the governor is not around. There is a restriction in the role and the activities and the performance of a deputy governor as enshrined in our law. Are you aware of this kind of limitation? And is that okay with you? It's okay with me. Life is a process now. At 37 plus now, I'm already a deputy governor. It has improved my political outlook, number one. Uh, 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 and I am not in a rush to drag with my governor or to whatever he says I should do. He knows we have we have, I have been doing one or two for the, for the government, and he knows my strength. So I will only dwell on my strength when it comes to giving adding value. Then whatever I also have to add politically, I am learning on the job. So for me, it is a win-win for me. And to cap it off, is my local government is very happy. We just it's, a, it's, it's historic. What happened today is historic. They are very proud. We had big weeks from the MPN days, from 1793. They've not been able to get this. So I just see it as an act of God and an, an opportunity yeah. I shouldn't have. So I'm very excited about Mr. it. Mr. Deputy my, Governor. Uh, yeah, become yeah. the outcome yeah. that suggests that we get. It's okay by us. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Your, your brother, who is an ESA command, uh, Philip Shahibu, who has been removed, you are an Akoku Edoma, from the same senatorial district. And those who will say, would you be happy if what happened to... Shaibu happens to you even within these six months. That is politics for you. Your job, first of all, is to be loyal. You understand? Uh, uh, even though fashion last year, may your loyalty not be tested. I do not know what may have, uh, 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 what, what has happened in the past. That is not my business. You understand? I'm just happy for this opportunity. And my local government is happy. The industry state is happy. I think. Mm -hmm. That, fine. Uh, all right, let's anchor on this note. And I'll, I'll list a few names. There are, since your emergence and when, since you were inaugurated, there's a, a lot of people who are worried about what could be a near future for you in terms of your loyalty that you have just prayed in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, in the voice of uh, 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 Governor Fashola, former Governor Fashola, who says, may your loyalty not be tested. But... If you remember the relationship of some of these persons, and as soon as you emerge, people started talking about this relationship and your principal, the governor. They talked about the relationship between himself and Adam Shomale, his relationship between himself and Dan Obi, his relationship with him himself and Yin Song Wike, his relationship with, him, uh, with himself and Philip Shawabu, his relationship with himself and Azeg Bami. These relationships have gone sour. Are you worried when you talk about loyalty that you are perhaps dealing with a person that in your party and in your state there are those who have criticized that there is a problem? Are you worried about it? Uh, if I if I understand you clearly, uh, uh, I am only worried about myself. I, I do not want to talk about what happened between Obasaki and Wiki. I'm not interested. It's like you're not getting me. What I'm telling you is for me, it's a total win. It's a total win. A region that has been marginalized, even if it's for 30 seconds, they are so grateful. It's a, it's a plus, number one. And number two, I am of the belief, having worked with him before, because the social tool you judge a man by his past, what that person has done in the past with you, what that person is doing currently with you, those are the things you put together and see if you can entrust your future to such a person. I feel strongly that getting this ticket, getting this job, but deputy governor has prepared me. Right. That's uh, yes. That's catalyzed my chances. And with the PDP, I will go higher. And all, right. all of that towards helping my local government and my state. If I have an, a national opportunity tomorrow, I also grab it. So uh, my my intention. I'm happy. I just want you to celebrate with me. If you say I am the youngest, just celebrate with me. I'm not interested <laughs> in <All right>. competition. <laughs> it's a win for Kukwedu. It's a win for Edo State, and it's a win for the youth. It's a week for democracy. Mr. Omobayo Marvelous Godwins, the brand new deputy governor of Edo State. May your loyalty not be tested, and I wish you the very best. You will need a lot Amen. of it. Thank you so much Amen. indeed. Thank you very much. Thank Take you. a break. Thank you for And when we return, it's going to be
uh, the PDP internal affairs, uh, some members of the House of Representatives are threatening that they will leave the party if Mr. Damagum does not step aside as the acting national chairman. We'll be speaking with the spokesperson of the group who said about 60 members of the PDP in the House are ready to leave the party. Honorable Ikenga Ugo Chinyere will be speaking with us next. With Glovo, you order anything you want, and when you receive it, you celebrate it with your whole body. Because when that tasty grilled chicken is here, the weekend starts. The ingredients for your favorite recipe, just in time. And when the cake arrives, the party is on. Because receiving anything on Glovo deserves a dance. Download the app, order anything you want, and track it minute by minute until it arrives. Glovo, order anything, we deliver in minutes. Now, all of us like to chop better food. Food where they make body tranga and vegetables where fresh, like see tomorrow, not day. We want to make the chocolate sweet the way we go like them. No cubes. Let me be the secret. Then make them with correct ingredients, like chicken, parsley, garlic, plenty iron corn full and palm to make your chocolate palm bra for you. Come the sweet well, well. Let him be the cocoa. Make we carry salute, throw away give no. Change your world by changing what day you play it. Every other year, my wife wants to paint, and her own kind of budget just makes me want to faint. 50 buckets of paint? Uh, it makes sense. I'm only dropping cheddar if you're using Santex. Santex? Yes, Santex. The amazing durability is more than mere text. Rich quality paint within your budget. So make a smart choice. Paint with Santex. You can't go wrong. Consultancy you did for my computer. Uh, I put two million. I just hold on. <laughs> I now collect dollars. What? Yes. I don't understand what's happening to Naira these days. So, so it's going to be two million times today's exchange rate. Hey, 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 doctor, wait, wait. Doctor, wait. Don't tell me you are one of those people who directly put pressure on the Naira and make it lose its value. You want to dollarize our economy and yet you pretend as if you don't know what's happening to the Naira. I've told you about how you abuse the Naira by spraying and stamping on it during your occasions. To deface and abuse the Naira as if it's not our national asset. But you can't take it easy. How? I will not take it easy. And neither will the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission Task Force on Currency Abuse and Forex Malpractice. Take it easy with you. They are coming for you. Desist from economic sabotage or you will face the wrath of the law. Before entering to the university, I ask myself one question. What does education mean to you? Education is the tool to shape your future. Fostering critical thinking and problem solving skills. Philema University City Campus, Maitama Abuja, is now open. Visit www.philemat.edu.ng to get started. The Duchess International Hospital caters to every aspect of a family's health needs. A one-stop shop for maternity and child health services, emergency medicine and critical care, medical and surgical subspecialties, dental and eye care, and a range of other subspecialties and services, all available at a single location right here in the heart of Kedja. And it really doesn't matter if you're paying out of pocket using your HMO or private insurance. We focus completely on providing that world-class affordable health care for all the family at all times. It's like
like every other year, my wife wants to paint, and her own kind of budget just makes me want to faint. 50 pockets of paint? Lover. Make it make sense. I'm only dropping cheddar if it's using Santex. Santex? Yes, Santex. The amazing durability is more than mere text. Rich quality paint within your budget. So make the smart choice. Paint with Santex. can't go wrong. can't go wrong. With a smart choice. Smart choice. Santex paint. Santex paint. Smart choice. Smart choice. Paint your dreams on the walls of your reality. Choose Santex paint for its rich quality, vibrant colors, and long-lasting coats. Available at authorized Santex paint distributors across Nigeria. Santex paint, the smart choice. Question. What does education mean to you? Education is a tool to shape my future, fostering critical thinking and problem solving skills. Philema University City Campus, Maitama Abuja, is now open. Visit www.philemax.edu.ng to get started. With Glovo, you order anything you want, and when you receive it, you celebrate it with your whole body. Because when that tasty grilled chicken is here, the weekend starts. The ingredients for your favorite recipe, just in time. And when the cake arrives, the party is on. Because receiving anything on Globo deserves a dance. Download the app, order anything you want, and track it minute by minute until it arrives. Globo, order anything, we deliver in minutes. much everyone for staying with us about 60 members of the people's democratic party in the house of representatives says they will quit the party over the ongoing crises in river state and 10 other chapters in the party honorable ikenga ugochinere a member of the house from imo state and five other members issued a threat at a press conference in the national assembly complex today in Abuja, some of the other lawmakers at the conference are Honorable Abu Malik Danga, PDP Kogi, Honorable Balami, PDP Bruno, Honorable Mustafa Abdullahi from Kaduna, PDP, and Awaji Nombe Abiante, PDP River State. I'm being, now, I'm being joined on the program by the man who spoke in those pictures, um, a member of the House of Representatives in Idiot or North South Federal Constituency of Imo State, a member of the PD PDP, Honorable Ikenga Ugoshin, he joins us live here in our Abuja studio. Thank you so much indeed for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. Why do you want Mr. Damagum out? Mr. Damagum is the acting chairman of the PDP. First, uh, you start by the constitutional ground going by the provision of our party constitution, whenever vacancy exists in any office of the party, the zone from where the former occupant to the general form files a replacement pending the conduct of a substantive convention to fill that vacancy. With the removal of a IU, vacancy occurred and the position was zoned to North Central. Damago as the deputy chairman has to act as chairman. He was supposed to summon the next meeting for the North Central to file a replacement. And this is getting up to one year. You have not filed that replacement. And the tenure is running. It cannot be reversed. So no matter whenever the court, matter in court, or all the issues gets resolved, the point that these years that are going cannot be reversed back. And we felt that this should have happened a long time ago. Not talk about the fact that he has not held next meeting. Remember, since we came out from the presidential election, we're supposed to have done post-assessment of the election, find out why we performed very uh, you know, poorly during the election, be able to reach members of the party to appreciate them. He has not even had any relationship or meeting with lawmakers elected on the platform of the party in the parliament. People are left to be, keep wondering like sheep without shepherd. There has not been any single leadership that he has provided. And then coming to the issue of people who have decided to say we have a tax to make sure that PDP is destroyed as a political party, still remaining in the party, no disciplinary actions. And then we now have this vacancy that is about to occur in about 19 states. And then we have seen lists being drafted. And this list has been drafted is against the resolution that was agreed by the NWC that when this tenure expires, those officers, those executives at the ward and LUJ level continue for three months pending the conduct of election. Mm -hmm. Then suddenly in Kwara, in uh, Ondo, in Rivers, list started coming out. Especially the case of Rivers is so painful because here you have some of our members who have joined APC and especially those ones in the House of Assembly. They brought the entire list. 
card carrying members of APC and you want to make them caretaker committee members of the party. So at this point, we felt as lawmakers that we cannot keep quiet and see the party of Eles Ekweme, Ababa Karimi, of and so on and so forth, destroyed by this acting chairman. And when I said, first of all, you ought not to be in office, so therefore step aside and let the North Central file that replacement. And that list that you are tampering with in, uh, in, uh, in River State, in Cross River, in about 10 states, mm -hmm. that those things must be as agreed by the party, which is those former executive officers yeah. remaining in those offices. Let me ask you, uh, you said Yocha Ayu is no longer the chairman of the party. He was removed and he's in court. So, but, the, I mean, legally speaking, yes. they see a contention. Of course, there has always been contention whenever a national chairman is removing but that doesn't affect the process of transition, yes. So, I mean, uh, procedurally, yes. there are those who believe that um, until you remove the case from court, the party cannot move forward. It, it depends on who is doing the interpretation. Whenever the court makes a decision, the party is bound to obey. But in the meantime, there is a vacancy that have occurred. Okay, so as we are waiting for Ayu to come out from court. In the eye of the law, it doesn't look like there's no, a vacancy. As, as, as we are waiting for him to come out of, from the court. So you, Damago, continue to act as national chairman of the party. We have had, when Obulafo was removed, when a lot of people were removing the party, even Alimo the Sheriff, he went to court. But that doesn't stop the party from fulfilling that constitutional provision of putting an acting person from the zone where the officer, there's a reason why the constitution said he must come, that person that should act must come from so the you, zone of the you, former you occupant. Are, I mean, you, you are, as a lawyer, the rest of yes. this, in, this, in this matter right now yes. has not been resolved. The man in contention is still in court. That has not been laid to rest. Yes. How do you want to replace a man who has not legally that is right. that is not exited a, the arena? Exactly. It's not like a replacement. The person that is coming is going to act pending the conduct of that substantive convention to fill that vacancy. So basically, you're not like filling a substantive vacancy. It's just for the party to keep running as an institution. But isn't that the reason why is in the wisdom of the party to put Damagum as the acting no, national no, no, chairman? No, no, no. There's no provision when for that. When you bring another person yes. to replace are you from the same senatorial zone? Have you not substantially removed him from the No, equation? no, no, no. That does not affect like when Alimo the sheriff came. He went to court. But that doesn't stop uh, Adamu Mazo from acting as our national chairman. The same thing happened in different cases. I can count from the time PDP was formed. The most important thing is that the constitution has made a provision. It doesn't matter whether the removal was legitimate or whether the removal was illegitimate or so. The most important is that the person that must sit there must come from the zone where the former occupant originated from. Right. So, and that's what we're saying, that he has no business He's staying in office almost going to one year. And not talk about the fact that he has not provided leadership. Mm -hmm. You will agree with me that PDP is not playing the role of opposition. It's like we are sleeping. I don't have somebody that is parading as national chairman. Do I need to talk loud about this? It's something that is very clear. And so, you allege collusion. The, 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 what we stated today, watch until people come back from Salah. Most of our members, most of the meeting yesterday up to this morning was some of them. You are alleging that Mr. Yeah. Amagum and, is, and, and, is and playing card you. with the APC. And I'm telling you, first is of all, evidence to that? Hold, hold on. Why will you have a national chairman of a party who has refused to connect meeting? Why will you have a national chairman of a party who will go and recruit members of APC as Ketika committee members? Why will you have a national chairman of a party who has not interfaced with lawmakers elected on the platform of the party? Why will you have a national chairman of the party who never spoke out when our members in Plato were being robbed and denied their mandate? Why will you have a national, call somebody a national chairman of a party when people went after our party structures in Rivers, he never led our party members to storm there to give solidarity to our party? So what, are you, are you, are you uh, uh, something for the correction? I, I, no, I mean, are you, are those evidence? Yes, it's evident, yes, it's evidence that he has that come from his responsibility. He's in bed with the hundred percent in bed with them because that is why he has refused to stand up for the party. And that is why, as I speak to you, those who are backing him are those who are loyalists of APC, are those who are with APC. So what is he doing with them? What is he meeting with them every night? We have all these facts, and he knows. And that's what we're saying. You have no business here. You are equating in action with an active activity. I, I, I'm telling you hundred percent, and he knows. And that's why everybody in the party have agreed that he must go. And he's going to go. You say and everybody. It's only your, you and your colleagues. No, no, no. Have Maybe you have not been following developments in the party. Even the governors are of the view that the party is like moribund. Nothing is happening. The party is not providing leadership. The party is not leading opposition. The party voices cannot be heard on anything happening in the country. And more importantly, those who have vowed to make sure the party is killed are the best friends of Damagu. No disciplinary action against him. Nothing well, is happening in the party. There is hundreds of them in almost about 14 states. The most important thing is that Damagu does not want to have the capacity 
capacity to lead the party, have not shown leadership. I have colluded with those who want to sing the same party. This party is an institution. It's the biggest opposition political party in Africa. But look at the way it's lying like somebody that is sick on both legs. So that is why we're saying for us to move forward, there's going to be rejigging. And first of all, return this position back to North Central, and then from there we can take it off. And the list that I'm tampering with in Cross River, in Rivers, with people who are not members of the party, don't play that joke because everybody is of the view that you cannot do that in this party. Mm. When you say that uh, there are those who are working to bring down the party, who are these persons? Because it looks like uh, uh, on, an unsubstantiated claim that you are making on live television. Some of them are my friends, and let me tell you, one thing my father taught me when I was growing up is the ability to say things the way they are. And you ask me, who are these people? What did uh, Yeson Wicker do in Rivers proudly? What does he go about telling people up to this afternoon? about what he's going to do to the party and how he's going to re-elect another party at the presidential election. Is that not anti-party? You heard is him it, say that. Don't, yeah, you have not even had him on your studio? Like, didn't he brief your people on live television? The most important is that if you feel you don't like your party any longer and then you want to bring your party down, you should be man enough to join is your new friends. Is some wicked? It's not even about him. It's about the group of people who have vowed that they will remain in the party. Instead of going to serve the masters they love so much, you have mentioned only one doing. person. Not and you said there's Go to a long list. State. The, the same thing happened in Abia State, where they worked against our presidential candidate. The same thing happened in Benue, you saw it. It happened in parts of uh, uh, Lagos. It happened in parts of Kanu. There's list. It happened in parts of Bauchi. It was deliberate. And those who did it are still moving from one corner. The most important is that, how can PDP make a, a way forward? When members of the party have resolved and said, we're going to make sure that the party does not win a presidential election, not even allowing the party to try, but we're going to tear the party apart. We're going to work for another political party. And my point is this. If you feel you don't like your political party, like, for instance, if I say I don't want to belong to the People's Democratic Party, I will boldly leave and go to another political party if there's a legal ground for me to do that. I don't need to stay inside the party and destroy the party. The party is an institution, and these people have all benefited from the party. What is their contribution to the party? The party have cut out for them, you know, raised them to whatever they are today. So what I'm saying in the face that mm -hmm. all over the world, politics is played with decency. That PDP cannot be reduced to what Alimo the Sheriff them used to do with AM AMPP and APP. On what grounds are you pushing this? You are not the leader of the caucus, you're just a, uh, a floor member of the PDP in the House, uh, because if you are pushing this politically in the structure of the party, you must have a ground upon which not just being a member, a locus for you to be able to, uh, a, a forum where you'll be able to push this politically. On what grounds are you pushing this? A man who campaigned for votes, convinced people to vote for the party, won an election alongside other 16 members, which we're going to see you doing our State of the Nation broadcast. You ask us, why are we speaking about the party that we're flying their flag? So we should keep quiet and allow some people who have contract to destroy the party. No, 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 I'm, I'm saying and this to you because no, 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 that's, that's not, not, not only that you're a lawmaker, my locus, you are a lawyer. My, my locus is so huge, so yeah. huge in the sense that one, I'm a registered member of this party. I'm a flag bearer in this party. I won election in this party. I'm sitting on that parliamentary seat on the platform of that party. And somebody is out there trying to destroy the party in almost about 10 states. And you ask me why I'm advocating for change. Why I'm exercising my constitutional right to ensure that the writing is done for my party, that the acting chairman goes to the North Center where he's supposed to come from, that you do not use APC members to make ethical committee members of our party. So if I don't speak out, if our group don't speak out, at the end of the day, which party are we going to use if we so, have any political Some interest? people have referred uh, to your group as a group of renegades in the house so the question is where are the minority leadership where is the minority uh, leader of uh, of the of the party uh, i mean of in the house of representatives who is a member of the pdp where is the minority whip where are the leadership of the pdp in the house where are not where are they not with you why not even, and that's what i'm asking the ground that, that, why not even ask me where was that mug not all, there also the most important thing you must recognize in intra-party politics is alliances, caucuses, and all these are uh, uh, coming together. But you a are group not of, the leader a group of the caucus. You are not a known force. No, no, we're, we're not speaking as... You are not no, a known force. No. And again, we're not speaking, we're not speaking as leadership of the caucus. Maybe you didn't listen carefully. These are a group of 60 lawmakers elected on the People's Democratic Platform who are members of the Opposition Coalition Caucus who decided on their own to say it is time to save who the party. Who is the leader of the caucus in the House? The leader of the caucus in the house for the entire opposition or for the no, minority? No, for the PDP. For the PDP. Mm -hmm. No, what we we'll have is minority, uh, 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 minority caucus leader. But that has nothing to do with those issues. No, 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 it does. You know, you know, you know, because no, 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 no. Let me explain to you. You know why it doesn't have anything to do with that? Because you are questioning my right. 
as a member of this party. No, not a you right. I'm, I'm questioning your grounds. And that is also because my right. Because you need to have grounds right. and locals to be able and, to... And I'm giving you my ground. The removal that, of your national chairman. of us, which is majority, 60 of us have said some people are sinking an institution that is bigger than them. And then as members of this party, who has authority of the party, who have flag bearers of the party, we have started mobilizing all stakeholders to now say, give way for our party to have a transition that will bring stability are for our party. Are you a member of the NEC? Oh, the members of the uh, membership of the NEC. Of the NEC of the We have representation PDP. in the NEC. But you are not a member of the no, NEC. No, I'm a member of the National Convention. But you're not and, a member of the NEC. And that is what we'll call. We'll call on the National Executive. Because if the decisions are going to be made, it's going to yes. be made on the floor of the, of the and NEC. And that is why we'll call on. That is why we came out today and called on the NEC to please, in the interest of the party, get this man out, appoint an acting chairman from the National Did they say we're the one that will appoint? Even in the yes. House, they say there's a division between yourself. The leadership of the there minority, is no, there is no division. you are not together. There is no division. So why are we not, why no, no, we you know why I say there's no division? Because you are mixing this thing up. There's no division. Because now, these are like minds who gather today, 60 of them, to pass a message across. And this message, the NEC can take it or not to take it. And they have said, that if we don't take this message, if we continue to run the party and decisions are being made in the headquarters of another political party, that we may reconsider our relationship with it. It's our right that we're trying to exercise. But we do not want this institution that a lesser Kweme, Jim Wobodo, and a lot of our party leaders at Move Academy so far to build, to be destroyed by a later day political magician. And that is what we're saying. We want to save the party. We even said we're going to take up legal action also to stop him from parading himself. So these are things that are allowed within the ambit of intra party politics. So whether anybody likes our move, of course, those who want PDP to keep sleeping, who wants PDP not to play the role of opposition, will definitely find one way or the other to counter what we are doing. But we don't care about that. What matters is that we're going to fight this battle until we ensure that PDP is rescued from their hand. But if they say they don't want to rescue, then we may have to go back again and reconsider our line of engagement with them going forward. In all of this, the night meeting is supposed to happen in a in few days. On so, uh, the, caucus, the National Caucus is on 17 Wednesday, and the NEC is on the uh, Thursday 18th, and the Board of Trustees. Mm. So, uh, if nothing is done before then, what is your next line of action? We made it very clear today that if they go about and say, oh, there's nothing wrong with the party sleeping, there's nothing wrong with the giant uh, political party in Africa lying like a baby, then we first of all, we'll proceed to the court. We'll first of all, stop him from parading, because the Constitution is very clear that the acting chairman should come from North Central. And then we'll go move to the next stage before we talk about taking the last option which we talked about today. But the most important that we must do something to save this party. Because people ask us, when party, this party was facing this kind of trial moment, what did we as lawmakers do? Mm -hmm. And most times all over the world, the, the hot base of political intra-party activism comes from the parliament, the House of Representatives. And we're trying to you know, energize, as a heartbeat of democracy, to energize our people in the PDP to wake up and ensure that we save this party from these people who want to destroy it. There are those who will be asking that, why not talk to Yocha Ayu? to withdraw or to relinquish the, 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 the hold that he has so that a party can move forward? Is that a possibility? Those who are bringing up back the issue of IU are looking for excuse to hang on to power, that we should go and beg IU so that IU can withdraw his case, so that now Central can take over. But you continue to administer the party since over one year, not like you have the capacity. IU continuing exercising his right in court is a constitutional thing. Whether he wants to withdraw for the interest of the party or not is immaterial. What matters is that since the exit of IU, that the constitution gave you opportunity and window to appoint an acting chairman from the North Centre. And if we have taken somebody from the North Centre, that person will have commenced the process of unification, process of reform, process of uh, uh, uniting everybody and leading the party. Now, the party is not being led. The party is just sitting there and nothing is happening in the party. Look at the things that is happening in the country and the party have no direction. This is a party that used to be very strong over the years and suddenly this party is not behaving like the way AMPP or CPP or the other party was behaving. Can, are you not worried that PDP of all political party, with almost over 18, 20 years in power, is now sleeping like he doesn't have capacity to do anything just because the wrong man is sitting as chairman? Even you, yourself, when last did you see him talk on anything that has to do with the party? You should, you, of course, you should know that this is not the right way to go. And that is why we feel we must do something to save the party. And stakeholders in the party, our majority of the stakeholders, the only people that do not agree are those who still John Ketting, telling you that they will ensure that PDP does not win any election in 2027. But real committed members of this party are worried that this is not how a political party should behave. Do you and your friends have the endorsement of Atiku Abubakar on this one? Majority of the stakeholders of the party, like I told you, is of the view that the party needs to move forward. We do not need anybody to endorse our views. We are adults. We came up together. We had our meeting. We said this is what will be good for us, 
be good for our party but is and it true that of our party. worker is behind all of this no you, 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 we, are, we don't have any meeting with any of the factions in the dispute we decided as lawmakers to say the first stage the first step to take is to do the constitutional thing first, which is allow the non-central to act and then start the process of reforming the party. There's conversations everywhere, whether reform, whether merger, and so on and so forth, but we cannot talk about those things where you see half people who are willing to destroy the party. Once discipline is restored, those who are castigating the party, those who are doing anti-party activity yeah. are shown the way out, and then Damagui is shown the way out, and acting chairman that have the capacity from non-central is brought on board, then we can start having reasonable con uh, conversations. Did you guys yes. really mean you want to leave the PDP? Or just, it was just a threat? No, let me tell you. If you stay in a political party, there are decisions that has to do about caretaker, committee members, your Congress, is our hand to move the party forward. It's decided by people from another political party. Honestly, can you be in that political party? So it's not just a threat. We mean it that if we continue to advocate for restoration of order, law, and decency in this party, and you say, no, you want us to play like AMPP of those days, are you getting me? One leg in the villa, one leg in Kano, that we're not going to do that. We may have to reconsider because there's ongoing conversation, as I speak to you, across all different political uh, devices in the country. But we say that will be the last extreme resort. We don't want to get to that point, but something must be done. And look at the judge. Now, suddenly, this thing has gone into the court. You have seen the expert order flying every day today alone, almost about two. So we cannot to run our political party from the courtroom. You saw an order stopping secondaries from attending ordinary neck meeting of the party that came out this afternoon. Matter was filed on Friday in the evening, all of a sudden before uh, 10 a.m. today, an order had been issued. And the same federal high court has said there will be no expected application on political matter. There's another one before that same federal high court to use it to affirm the illegal extension of tenure of local government chairman. We can't allow these things to happen because somebody somewhere wants to destroy this party. For what reason? What did the party do to you? You run an election like every other person. If you run an election and you lost an election, is the party only anything, party have helped you over the years. And we're saying it doesn't matter whether it's a Tuku issue, whether it's a Wiki issue. We don't want to be involved in all those issues. What we're saying is that this party must be run like a political party, not an extension of another political party. Honorable Ikenga Ugo Chinyere, member of the House of Representatives representing Ediato, North South Federal Constituency of Imo State. Thank you so much indeed for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. We're hoping to be hearing uh, in the coming days from Mr. Damagum himself all of the allegations that Honorable and his colleagues have leveled against him. Maybe he's able to clear the air. But that's how we end the program tonight. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I'm Shion Wakimale. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless Nigeria. <laughs>